Dropping the Narc Bomb The dropping of the bomb is a common tactic of our kind. It is something that happens with regularity. It is an act of manipulation designed to achieve the prime aims, chief of which are control and fuel, and one which you'll undoubtedly recognise. Do any of these scenarios seem familiar to you? The day before you were due to travel to the wedding of one of your childhood school friends, we cause an argument in order to avoid going, inventing some reason why this cannot happen. You are accused of not caring about us if you still wish to attend. You eventually end up not going, having to make some excuse as to why you cannot attend. You are about to have a night out, and we create some kind of emergency which delays you from going out or even prevents you from going. There is, of course, no emergency. You have invited friends over for dinner. Shortly before their arrival, we will create an almighty argument. The night before an important interview, we keep you awake all night, jabbing you with our elbow and insulting you so that you are unable to sleep. You are about to go away for a few days, when we accuse you of having an affair, thus creating a scene, tension and upset. Whilst the fact that we create these arguments, cause confusion and generate drama is standard behaviour, when we engage in dropping the bomb, it is done at times which is regarded, from your perspective, as a terrible time to do it. It coincides with something special or important happening, which leaves the victim wondering why this always seems to happen when they are about to go somewhere or do something. Dropping the bomb is invariably, less from mid-range, an instinctive response by the narcissist to either being challenged or wounded. If, for instance, you are going away, this threatens the narcissist's sense of control because you are doing something without the narcissist. When something of importance in your world is about to happen, we respond by creating a drama which appears to be designed to spoil the important or enjoyable event. There is no appears about it. It is an act, invariably an instinctive one, and one of which the narcissist is unaware as the real reasons that it is being done, but nevertheless is intended by the narcissism for the purposes of ensuring that you are put under control and that you provide us with fuel. Whatever it is that you have done, you have threatened the narcissist's control, and this response of dropping the narc bomb is designed to assert control over you. One aspect is, of course, we obtain fuel. Causing upset and drama is always a near-guaranteed method of gaining fuel, but the dropping of the bomb is designed to heighten the fuel that will be provided. Just like the fact that we build you up during seduction and then cast you down during the devaluation allows us to create a heightened contrast and thus maximise the amount and potency of the fuel, by dropping the bomb at a time when you are expecting something pleasant to happen or you are preparing for an important event, your response is going to be of a greater intensity. This increases the potency of the fuel. When you are looking forward to that wedding, excited about seeing people and enjoying the day, the dropping of the bomb means that your upset, annoyance and disappointment is more marked. You will generate a much larger amount of fuel. We, of course, create drama even when nothing is happening. A quiet Sunday afternoon suddenly becomes a battlefield. That is done to assert control over you and gain fuel. The dropping of the bomb, however, is a ticket to plenty of plentiful fuel as you react to having your excited anticipations shattered. The bomb's dropped also out of jealousy or envy. You doing something without us, something interesting, invites envy. The fact that you are doing something with other people, not us, makes us jealous of the fact that you've chosen them over us. 
Accordingly, the narcissist cannot stand the fact that you are going to do something which you will enjoy and causes you to be put into the spotlight. Taking the example of the wedding that I mentioned earlier, since it is your school, friend, you are going to see people that you know well and may not know the narcissist particularly well. Attention will be on you, which then causes the narcissist to feel ignored, although, of course, that is never intended. This it results in wounding and therefore threatens the narcissist's control. If you have an interview for a promotion, then we are envious that you are succeeding, which in turn implies that we are not succeeding. This threatens our control, and therefore the envy rears its head. The narcissist cannot bear for you to be happy, excited or the focus of attention, unless it is because of us. If your happiness is because you are anticipating a dinner party with your friends, then that is nothing to do with us, and therefore we are wounded. In the mind of the narcissist, this suggests that the narcissist is unimportant and inferior. This offends our sense of control. We cannot allow that to be the case, and accordingly our jealousy and or envy comes to the surface, and this acts as the catalyst for us dropping the narc bomb. 3. Control. By causing you to react through our dropping of the bomb, we are able to remind ourselves that we have control of you. By causing you to decide not to go to the wedding because you feel obliged to remain at home with us, or you decide not to go and attend a friend's engagement party because you are too upset, this allows us to assert control over you. We cause you to cancel your plans, alter your intentions, and instead your focus returns to us, which of course is where it always must be. This underlines that we are in control, and assists in maintaining our notions of superiority and omnipotence. Further, there is anticipatory fear. Eventually, you will recognise that a drama is always created before you are about to do something special or important. Of course, our victims do not realise the real reasons why this is, but instead attribute it to selfish and spoiling behaviour, without understanding what is really behind it. What our victims do come to realise, however, is that since this happens each time you are looking forward to an event, the victims end up dreading what will happen when an event is on the horizon. Your birthday is coming up next week, and you are just waiting for the eruption from us which happens every year. Will it be on the day, the night before, or during the planned celebrations? You become anxious and nervous, treading on those well-known eggshells, looking to mollify us before matters get out of hand. What are you providing us with? Control and fuel. We didn't even have to do anything. Your anticipation of what will happen allows us to assert that control. Indeed, you often begin to adjust your own behaviour so that you decide it's just easier not to organise a birthday party. It is far less aggravation to turn down an invitation to go out rather than have to endure the drama which will inevitably come before you try to attend the dinner party at your friend's and you make excuses so you avoid having to go to weddings, christenings and the like. Little by little, the dropping of the bomb causes you to fear the arrival of an event which is special or important to you, so that you alter your actions, reducing your interactions, and slowly isolate yourself, allowing us to tighten our grips upon you. This process is insidious, as you see friends less and less, family on fewer occasions, and in turn you increase your exposure to us, your reliance on us, and in turn our manipulations. Blame is also a factor. This works in two ways. If you try to resist the effects of us dropping the bomb, so you decide you will still attend the wedding and even decide to go without us, or you are going to host the dinner party still, despite the fact that we are storming about the house, banging the doors as we go, we will then accuse you of being selfish, self-centred, and not caring about what we want. This is, of course, a classic dose of projection. These accusations of selfishness are the opening up of a further front for the purposes of trying to draw further fuel, to assert control, to create a scenario which can be used against you in the future. I was ill, and you still went to the engagement party. And to add a further attempt to wear you down so you give in and change your mind. It is also done to avoid blame. We will drop the bomb, kick up a fuss, create a scene and dole out the drama, 
And if you eventually give up and announce that you will not go, but you accuse us of controlling you or trying to spoil things, we will then exhibit our classic contradictory behaviour. I mean, we may well have spent an hour arguing with you, telling you that you should not go, and that we need you to stay at home. But once you have given, if you given in, if you point the finger at us, you can expect to be told that we did not tell you what to do, we don't control you, and that you made up your own mind not to attend. This will amaze you that we can be so hypocritical. But the unaware, lesser and mid-range narcissists do not realise they are doing this because of the compartmentalisation. Greaters and the ultra do recognise but do not care. It is highly effective. Ultimately, when we have dropped the bomb a few times, we are able, through the narcissistic perspective, to recognise its effectiveness against you in terms of affording us the prime aims. Instinctively, the unaware narcissist recognises in the unconscious that it is well worth continuing to deploy this manipulation because it causes you such upset and hurt. In effect, it becomes a go-to form of manipulation. The narcissist unconsciously knows that control can be applied, fuel will be obtained, that you will alter your plans, and therefore the more that you react to it, the more that it will be used against you. The dropping of the bomb is a frequently used manipulation in our relationship with you. In order to counter it, you should learn to, one, recognise what it is, two, recognise when it is about to be used, three, not provide any fuel or reduce the provision of fuel by not reacting to our sudden drama, argument or crisis, for do what you intended to do anyway. You may as well enjoy your event because we're going to cause a scene irrespective. Five, do what you intend to do anyway. And this sends a signal that the dropping of the bomb is not working, which means, like any other manipulation, raises the possibility that it will be used less against you, and therefore you will remove the aggravation and fear that is caused by this.